guys, thanks so much for joining me. Emily here today, we are working on the reformer. We're going to be working a lot with our feet in the headrest, facing backwards today. We don't need any props today. I just placed my springs that I use for footwork on. Let's go ahead, lying on our backs. Let's go ahead and drape our legs over the foot bar, our calf on, not hanging on with our knees, not poking our knees over, yanking on for dear life. So leaving it loose, we're letting our legs dangle. We're gonna check in with our body, try to release our hip flexors, release our quads. Inhale, exhale, go ahead and check on your sacrum. Make sure it's heavy. All three points, your tailbone and your hips, are equally pressing into the carriage or your sacrum is heavy at least. You have your lower back curved or lifted off the mat, but all 12 ribs are resting on the mat. You're not popping your ribs up, creating space between your upper back. Go ahead and inhale here. Take your hands to the outside of your ribs. Exhale. Draw your hands towards the center, interlocking your fingers. See how close and tight and well knit your ribs feel as if you're wearing a corset? This is how we're going to keep our ribs in class. Inhale again, leaving your ribs here. Exhale, relax your sternum, feeling your collarbone area widen and flattening your shoulder blades or plugging them into the mat. Place your hands down by your side. We're going to take another inhale. On the exhale, we're going to shake out our neck and drop our lower abdominals, drawing our belly button towards our spine so that we can see. First start drop if we were to lift our heads and look, but we're not going to flatten our low back into the carriage when we do that. Let's go ahead and take two more breaths. After you look at me doing the exercise, Please turn your head back into the ceiling so you don't strain your neck. One more breath. From there, we're going to go ahead and raise our arms up to the ceiling, bringing our hands above where our 12th rib or the bottom of our sternum meet, right here at the base or the bottom of your sternum. For ladies, it'll be your bra strap. We're ready. Inhale. Curl through, twist your shoulder blades. Rocking your abdominals without engaging your hip flexors or your quads. You'll know if you engage them because you'll feel start to tighten on the foot bar or lift off the foot bar. If that's the case, back up a little bit. Come back down. Inhale. Exhale, drop your abdominals. Curl over your sternum. Using your abdominals in to lift your head, neck, and shoulders up. Not using the lower half of your body and not imprinting your low spine into the mat. Inhale back. And exhale up one more time. And come back down. From there, we're first going to bring our feet to the foot bar. Shimmy around so you're not shoving yourself into the shoulder blocks. Go ahead and bring your feet up to tabletop. Arms up to the ceiling, coming out of your starter shoulder again. Inhale. Exhale, dropping your belly button to your spine. Curl up. Using your abdominals to scoop your head, neck, and shoulders. Come back down on the inhale. Exhale to curl up. Even toe up. Even time to come down on the inhale. One more. Now come back down. From there, place your hands on your side. Bring your feet to the center of the foot bar. And Pilates feet, toes on, heels off, feel squeezing together strongly, drawing everything up towards the midline, engaging your inner thighs, tweezing your seat, retaining your neutral spine. We are going to inhale out and exhale to pull back in over the carriage. Our knees will track over our toes. Inhale, and exhale. Tweeze your seat, 
Maybe you're going to try this in the summer. You can really reach your hip flexors all the way like that. And squeeze it in. And release. Six. Inhale. Check your mighty ribs. Eight. Straighten your legs all the way. Here's nine. Relax and press the start. You'll be able to tell if you're popping your back because your ribs will flare up and pop off the mat. Go ahead and relax your ribs into the mat. And come in. From there, we're going to come to the vertical or bridge position where our toes are hooking or are resting gently over the foot bar. The foot bar is on the ball of our foot where our heels are in a flexed position. We're going to press out on the inhale, driving our heels under the foot bar the same time we press out. And exhale, and come back. Inhale to press out, straighten your legs. And exhale. Try to keep your sacrum flat the whole time. Squeezing everything together. Big toe, ankle, knees, inner thighs. At the top, see if you can tweeze your seat a little bit further. Don't turn out your legs, but engage your glutes. See if you can relax your neck a little bit more. And 10. Keeping the same leg position where everything's squeezing in towards the center. Lift your feet up. Place your heels on the foot bar. Pull your toes back towards your knees. Still squeezing everything together. Press out. Trying to see if you can tweeze your seat at the top a little bit here as well. And exhale to come back in, releasing your hip flexors. Press out, squeezing glutes and hamstrings. Pull in, releasing your hip flexors. And press. And release. Even though you're inhaling on the way, see if you can drop your abdominals a little bit more as well. Let your abdominals in and up your body. Wide on the foot bar, turning your feet out, flexing your, your big toe back to your knee, rotating your femur in the hip socket to engage all of your hip muscles. Not letting your inner thighs go in. Make sure that you retain some um, muscle there. All right. Bring your ribs together. Press out, squeezing our glutes, squeezing our inner thighs together towards each other, even though our feet are going to move on the foot bar, and release to come back in. And squeeze towards the midline, even though they're not going to come, you should feel a pressure towards the middle. Are we coming from your own body? Make sure that you're not imprinting your low back into the mat and you still have a slight curve or lift. Seven, eight, here's nine, squeeze, 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 and release, and ten, release. Same position, but come on to your toes in a forced arch position where your heels will be lifted as high as you possibly can. We're going to press out. And bend our knees so they're tracking over our big toe to come back in. And squeeze everything towards the midline. It's still the same motion as when you are on your heels. Your springs will be slightly heavier because you're pushing further away from the, the foot bar. Six. Go ahead and check on your back. Check on your neutral spine. Your sacrum should be heavy. Slight lift in your low back. All your ribs on. Shake out your neck. Here's 
is nine. One more, squeeze it together, and release. Bring your feet to the center, parallel, squeezing everything together, like some of the first footwork exercises we did on the balls of our feet or our heels. Knees, inner thighs, ankles, and big toes all squeezed together. We are in the forced arch position up on the ball of our foot, as high as we can lift our heel. We're going to press out and pull in and out. Squeeze your seat at the top without turning up. There's four. Just what you need to. Here's five. Belly is fine. Six. Seven. Make sure you don't lose the squeeze. Up or down. One more. Stay up on this tenth one. We're going to drop our left heel under. Straighten our leg to bring it up to the right. Bend our left knee. Drop our right heel under. Straighten to the left. And left. And left. Right heel. Still drawing towards the midline with our legs. So, when we both bring both legs up to a uh, four arch position in the center, our legs should still be squeezed together as if we're squeezing our ankles, knees, inner thighs, and big toes together. As long as you're not rocking on your sacrum or in the stable, you can speed up. Platform your arms. And ten. And lift. Staying up at the top. We're going to drop both heels under together. And lift by zipping everything up to the midline of the center. And lower your heels with control. And lift. Lower. Lift. Three. Four. We're going to ten. Five. Six. Excellent. You pull your heels up. Feel that energy shooting out the top of your head as you lift. Nine. Ten. Stay under. Bend your knees. Kind of leave your heels under the foot bar for as long as you can. Slowly begin to bring the carriage to the bumper. From there, go ahead and come off to the side. Let me see. Change your springs for hundreds and then coordination. I use two springs for that. A medium and a light. Please use whatever springs uh, you prefer. Come back down to lying on your back. Bring your feet to tabletop. Inhale to prepare. Exhale to curl up over your sternum. Bring your legs to your working level. And inhale. Two, three, four, five. Exhale. Inhale. On the exhale, do one long smooth exhale as if you're fogging a mirror in front of your face. See if you can look down and see your belly drop a little further. Wide collarbone. Soft sternum. Squeeze your inner thighs. Bring your ribs together. Reach strongly towards the foot bar or the springs. Pump your arms vigorously. Support your neck by curling up over your abdominals. Try not to put strain in your neck. Two more. Top. Come a little deeper. Bring your knees into tabletop. Bring your arms to the sun. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Bring your arms in to your sides, hugging your biceps into your ribs, bringing your fists up towards your shoulder. We inhale, exhale, curl up, extending our legs out. After our legs are extended out parallel, turn them on to Pilates seat. Open them the width of our former. Squeeze your legs back together using your inner thighs. Bring your legs to parallel. Bring your knees to tabletop. Bring your arms in. Rest your head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale. Exhale. Extend everything in parallel. Turn it out in Pilates V. 
Open your legs one and close. Open your legs two. Squeeze together through your inner thighs. Bring your legs to parallel. Bring your knees to tabletop. Bring your hands to your shoulders. Press your head, neck, and shoulders. Inhale. Exhale to extend. Turn your legs out to fly T. Open one, two, three. Legs in parallel, knees to tabletop. Hands to your shoulders. Rest head, neck, and shoulders. We are halfway there. Inhale, see if you can hover your arms up off the mat the entire time. Exhale, press out. Turn your feet up. Here's four, three, two, one. Belly drops to your, to your spine the whole time. Press your head, neck, and shoulders. Try not to curl your shoulders in. Give them wide collarbones. Exhale to push. Turn it up. Here's five, four, three, two, one. Reach energy towards the foot bar. One more. Inhale. Exhale, extend. Turn it up. Here's six, five, four, three, two, one. Legs in parallel. The tabletop. Hands to your shoulders. Press head, neck, and shoulder. With control, place your feet on the foot bar. Separate your feet a little bit wider than your hips. And windshield wiper. Your shins. Taking care not to go too far if you have knee problems. This could cause more harm than good for you. Maybe just give them a little wiggle if you do. Go ahead and peg your straps. Come up to sitting. This side. I'm going to change my springs to one spring. I'm going to use one medium spring for this. I'm going to place my headrest down. My feet will go in my headrest. I'm going to turn to face the uprights on my reformer at the back of the machine, squeezing my ankle, knees, and toes together, making sure I have one hand's width from the back of the reformer. Like the edge of the reformer carriage to my tailbone. I'm going to straighten my legs. I'm going to turn them out into Pilates feet. You're welcome to turn them out into parallel. If you find that your legs do not fit, place one leg on top of the other, crossing your legs, or cross it the other way, parallel or turned out. I'm going to come up, check on my spacing, hold on to my handles with my palms facing me, my thumb trapped around the handles. Bring my shoulders up, back and down. Ribs in. Belly's lifting. Long necks. I'm going to go ahead and have a wide round shape with my arms. Inhale, I'm going to exhale. Tuck my tailbone. And the tucking of my tailbone will drive the carriage away from me. And inhale to sit back up. Exhale. Tucking my tailbone, moving the carriage with my abdominals, articulate back up to sitting. One more. Articulate down, coming into a C-shaped curve. The movement of the C-shaped curve will drive the carriage away from you. Come back up. Adding on, this time we're ready. Inhale, exhale, tuck my tailbone draw the handles into my sternum by bending my elbows. I'm going to articulate back up, bringing my arms back up into that wide circle. Exhale, bending at the elbows, drawing the carriage underneath my body by tucking my tailbone. And sit back up. Here's three. Sit back up. If you feel your legs start to hover off at any point, that is your edge. Stop right there and see how much deeper you can work from that position. Drop your belly button to your spine so you start to curl back. Come back in. Make sure that you have that hands width the entire time. And come back up. From there, we're going to bring our arms up into a 90 degree bend for each elbow with the palm facing me. I'm going to bend back at a diagonal in a flat back position. I'm going to dip my elbows slightly, lift my arms up, 
stack my spine up to the ceiling, letting the carriage touch the bumper. I'm going to bring my arms straight out from my shoulders and bicep curl to bend my elbows back to 90 degrees. I'm going to come back, dip my elbows slightly, leaving my belly button drawn into my, drawn into my spine, shaking out my neck to release any neck pressure, lift my arms up, letting my spine extend up, bringing my arms straight out in front of me, and bicep curl to bend the elbows to 90 degrees. Come back into flat back, dip my arms lift, sit straight up, arms in front of me, bicep curl, bend back, dip the arms, lift in a diagonal, sit straight up, bringing my arms with me, arms straight out in front of me, bend at the elbow. One more, and come back into a flat back, make sure I'm not flaring my ribs, dip my elbows slightly, lift my arms up on a diagonal, stack my spine straight up to sitting, bring my elbows out in front of me, and bend my elbows in. From there, I'm going to release my arms, shake them out real fast, I'm going to bring my arms out in front of me, I'm going to open my arms to slightly in front of me on the periphery, my palms will be facing the back, but my thumbs will still, my thumbs and fingers are still wrapped around my handles for safety. Sit straight up. Draw your belly up and in. Make sure your ribs are flaring. And tiny pulses back for 10, 9. Squeezing your blades. Make sure that you're not bringing your shoulders up to your ears. Make sure that you're not flaring your wrists. Here's two. And one. Release it front. Shake your arms out one more time. We're going to do uh, the bow and arrow with the slight twist of our spine for our final exercise face in the back for this series. We're going to bring our arms up, our palms facing down. We're going to inhale, exhale to pull your right arm back to your underarm, not up to your shoulder, to your underarm. To keep your shoulder blade down your back. Look over to your right side and release everything to the front. You will lose, most likely lose, slack in your ribs. We're going to engage our left on the left side, pull the left handle back to the left under, look to the left side, release everything, untwisting to the front. When you come back, don't bend back to get your carriage to move like this. We're going to stay sitting straight up the whole time. I'm going to pull back until my lats engage. And then when my lats engage, I'm going to begin to twist to look over to the right. I'm going to untwist. And after my carriage touches the bump, I'm going to continue to release my hand with control. I'm going to pull back. My lats are going to engage when my spring tension starts to pull. Then I'm going to twist. I'm going to come back to the center. Release. When my spring tension leaves, I'm going to release with control. Pull. Twist. Untwist, release, pull, twist, twist, release. One more each side, pull, and then twist. So that you're not leaning back to make the movement happen. Take your both your handles in one hand, spin it around carefully. To face the front of your former, bring in the back of your body to touch the shoulder blocks, but sitting straight up. Make sure that your springs are not good, your uh, handles are not crossed. We are going to go ahead and hold the handles with our thumbs looped underneath. So our fingers are all on the top of the spring. We're going to nod our chin to our chest and articulate our spine back at the sitting. Nod our chin to our chest. Coming up into a C-shaped curve while sitting straight up for our belly button to our spine. Articulate our spine, head last. One more. From there, we're going to add on for more of a spine stretch. If you prefer, you can stretch your legs straight out in front of you, but make sure that you're engaging your legs, you're squeezing everything together, you're not just letting them lay there alone. We're going to put our chin to our chest and reach our fingers towards the foot bar. Pull them back to our hips, and stack our spine back up. Now on your chin to your chest, 
drawing your belly button to your spine. Come back. Nod your chin, your chest. Pressing forward the underside of your arms, down your ribs. I'm going to cross my legs to show three more. And now my chin, my chest. Pressing forward. Still the same exercise. Find my chin, my chest. Find your belly buttons. Pressing forward. Reaching strongly with energy to the foot bar on my fingertips. One more. Bringing my ribs together for the long way into the center. And sit up. From there, I'm going to take my hands. I'm going to twist them so that my hand is going to be underneath my strap. So my palms are now pushing into the handle. I'm going to bring my arms to a goal post T position, slightly in my periphery. Draw my abdominals up and in, make sure that my ribs aren't flaring. I'm going to bring my arms to straight in front of my ears, reaching forward slightly, and bend at the elbows. A slight movement. Inhale the lift. See how little you can move your carriage for this. Your carriage will move, but it shouldn't be bouncing around. You should be in control of your carriage the entire time. Sit up as straight as you can. And now we're going to do one more. From here, go ahead and bring your arms out to the side, drawing your shoulders down your back, rolling your shoulders up, back, and down. Shoulder blades are flat. Make sure you are flaring your ribs. We're going to inhale, tap our fingers in the center, create the giant circle again, like you did with facing backwards, and exhale to open. Don't bring your arms back past your body. Keep them in your periphery. When you bring your fingertips to touch, see if you can wrap your ribs a little bit more, tightening the muscles and squeezing that contraction a little bit harder. Inhale to open. Stop right here. Exhale. Take our hands, flip them so that they're pushing out. So we're going to take our fingertips, so they tap in the center, they're touching each other. We're going to touch them to the middle of our forehead and lean forward slightly in the diagonal. So there's energy shooting out of the top of our head to where the ceiling meets the wall. I'm going to draw my belly button up and in. I'm going to draw my abdominals up and in. I'm going to knit my ribs together, draw my shoulder blades down my back, bring my shoulders away from my ear. I'm going to straighten at the elbow to reach for where the wall meets the ceiling. Come back, we're going to do four in this arm position. Straighten at the elbow, and bend. Here's three, and bend. Here's four, and bend. If you'd like to move on, go ahead and place your fingers in a diamond position in the center of your forehead. Still leaning in a diagonal, I'm gonna press out, leaving my shoulders down my back, not allowing my shoulders to shrug up to my ears. And bend. And bend. If you feel that you cannot complete this movement without shrugging your shoulders, please bring your fingertips to the middle of your forehead again. Go ahead and bring your arms down, keeping them in front of your hips. Go ahead and switch the, uh, the legs so the opposite one is now in the front. Drawing your shoulders down your back, not allowing your arms to sweep behind you. Bring your arms to the front and around to the sides for an arm circle. Keeping your arms in your periphery the whole time, not releasing the tension on the straps. Up, don't allow the straps to pull you backwards. If you feel the straps pulling backwards, make your circles a little bit smaller. See if you can slightly lean into your resistance a little bit more to try to control it. Don't lean your body forward like this, but see if you can just put a little bit more weight into your handles. In reverse, and down through the center. Up through the side, the ceiling, 
Run through the center. Two more. Abdominals up and in. One more. Go ahead and let your carriage come into the bumper. Go ahead and peg your straps with control. Shake out your body. I am going to change my springs to one heavy spring. You can go in medium spring if you'd like. It is easier to control uh, the carriage and your body on one heavier spring, in my opinion, for my body type. For this next series of exercises, we're going to be facing the back of our former again. Towards the uprights, we're going to make sure that we have that hands width between our tailbone and the back of the reformer. Myself personally, I like to hang the bottom of my foot and my toes off of my foot, uh, off of my headrest here because it helps me not to clench it in my hip flexors and my quads so much. But you might find that that's not the case. We would like to keep a bend in our knee with our legs squeezing together. We're going to come up, palms up to the ceiling, fingers wrapped around your um, handles with your thumbs wrapped around the other side. We're going to exhale. We're going to tuck again, leaving our shoulders down our back. It's the same movement as we did earlier, but our hands are not going to be in the circle position. And we're going to lift back. We are trying to see if we can flatten our sacrum, the carriage. If you feel your feet start to hover off the headrest, that's the edge of your movement. Go back there. See how much deeper you can work from that position. There's three. Squeeze your legs the whole time. We're going to six. Sit straight. No, don't flutter your ribs. Four. Tucking your tailbone. Moving the carriage with your abdominal curl. Drawing your belly under your spine. Here's five. And then six, we're going to stay down there. One more. And back. From here, we're going to bend our elbows, bicep curling. We're going to bring our fists to our shoulders and release. And bring it in. Don't round in. Draw your shoulders down your back. Dropping your belly with your spine. If you need, I, my sacrum is not flat on the carriage at this point. I am in a pretty deep C-shaped curve. Here's seven. One more. And articulate your spine out. Shake your arms out real fast. When you come down into the bicep curl, like I was saying, you might not be able to flatten your sacrum completely on the mat and maintain uh, the movement without feeling rocky. Come up slightly off of that deep, deep, deep C-shaped curve or with your uh, sacrum on flat on the mat. So you can come into a C-shaped curve with your sacrum hovering off the mat and maintain. Okay, for, for this next move, we're gonna bring our palms facing down. We're gonna inhale, exhale, tuck your tailbone, come back. We're going to do rowing, wide shoulders, down your back, bring your arms in to below, right at your underarm, right below your underarm. We're gonna pull and release. Squeeze your glute and release. Here's three, knit your ribs, Draw your belly button to your spine. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. Shake out your neck. Five, six. If you feel your feet start to hover, come out of your C-shaped curve slightly to help your legs up. And eight. Go ahead and take it up. You're going to bring our palms to face the slower. Exhale, come down. So your sacrum, a little back or flat on the mat. Bring one leg to tabletop, bring the other leg to tabletop. From there, we're going to extend our body and our legs into a teaser shaped position. Bend your knees into tabletop, articulate your sacrum back down with the carriage. And extend, open and wide, do not bend your arms there, open and wide across the collarbone and bend your knees. Come back down. One more. We're going to hold this one. And up. We're going to dip our legs in it. And exhale, lift them. 
Dip your legs. Exhale, lift. One more, just moving your legs. Bend your knees into tabletop. We're going to just move just the upper body in. We're going to come down to the mat and lift our body up into a teaser position. And come down. If you need a little assistance, lift up slightly into your handles before lifting your upper body to create some additional tension to help lift your body. For example, I'm going to lift my arms, use it to assist to lift my body. I'm going to place one foot down, then the other, and bring my body back up to sitting. And then I'm going to peg my straps, bring my feet into a butterfly position. I'm going to wrap my forearms around my shoulder blocks and around over my back to release my hip flexors, my inner thighs, my low back. I'm going to take a couple breaths here. More so than a teaser, uh, it is considered to be a teaser exercise, but I think of it more as just an abdominal uh, series myself personally. From there, we're going, I'm going to stay on my one heavier spring. We're going to move into chest expansion and thigh stretch. When we move into thigh stretch, we're going to bring up something that we just did in teaser to help assist us with that. For chest expansion, personally, I like to come so that my toes wrap around the edge, the back edge of the carriage. If this makes you uncomfortable, you can place your thighs up against the shoulder block, putting your handles around your wrists like bracelets and choking up on your straps. I come into chest expansion like this. I'm going to hold on to my handles, let my knees separate hip width apart. Drawing my abdominals up and in, squeezing my glutes to drive my hips forward, bringing my ribs together, opening my collarbone, softening in the neck. I'm going to pull back, squeezing my blades. Look to the right and center. Look to the left and center and release. I'm going to exhale using my lats. Pull back. Look to the left, center, right, center and release. Draw my abdominals up and in, squeezing my hamstrings and glutes to drive my hips forward. Look right, center, left, center. Release. Draw my arms back to look left, center, right, center. Release. One more set, squeezing my glutes strongly to bring my hips forward. Right, center, left, center. Release. One more. Look left, center, right, center, release. For this series, if you're feeling any pain in your knees, just go ahead and put a towel or a uh, little foam pad under your knees to help uh, alleviate the pressure. I'm going to come up, I'm going to bring my knees to my shoulder blocks for a uh, thigh stretch. I'm going to put my hands through my wrists like the bracelets. I'm going to choke up all my straps. I'm going to squeeze my glutes and hamstrings to drive my hips forward. I'm going to leave my shins and feet flat on the mat. Inhale. Exhale to come back. As if I'm between a panini press, I'm going to exhale to come back up again. The same as with the teaser series where I said lift your arms slightly to create some tension in your straps to assist you in coming back up. Same thing for side thigh stretch. I'm going to come back. On the diagonal, it's if I'm between two sheets of glass. You can lift your arms slightly if you need assistance to tighten your springs to lift you back up. One more, squeeze your glutes and hamstrings to drag your hips forward. Come back at an angle and lift right back up again. Okay, I'm going to peg my straps. I'm going to turn around carefully, place one spring on, one light spring on, for kneeling reverse ab curl. It's a quadruped position movement. I'm going to come so that my knees are pressed in to my shoulder blocks. My hips are over my knees. My shoulders are over my wrists. I took my thumbs and I wrapped them to the outside of my reformer so that my reformer does not catch them. Inhale, and exhale to curl up and look in at my belly button. 
Bring my shoulders down my back. Finally, I'm out of the pinky edge to assist with that. I'm going to deepen my curl to bring the carriage into me and release and deepen. There may be some movement or some flexing in your hip flexor, but you should be driving your glutes to your heels to initiate this movement. This movement is being initiated by how much you can deepen the curve in your abdominals and your spine and use your abdominals to drive the carriage to your knees. Come back out. From there, I'm going to lift my left leg off of the mat, bring my left knee around to the outside of my right knee. Try to keep my body square. I curl up again. I pull the carriage under. I'm deepening the curl of my abdominals. Release. Leave your left foot hovering off the mat. Just release. Leave your shoulders down your back. Your support. Shin, your right shin should be flat on the carriage. One more. And come back down. Go ahead and release your left leg from behind your right. Place your left knee back in front of the shoulder block. Lift your right leg up. Bring your right leg to the outside of your left leg. Tap the knee behind you. Leave your foot lifted up off the mat. Leave your left shin and foot in the mat. Drop into a C-shaped curve. Square your body as best you can. Deepen your C-shaped curve to pull the carriage underneath you. And release. Draw your shoulder blades down your back. Leaving your neck loose. There's four. Here's five, six, check the knees over your body, make sure that you're leaving it as square as you can, seven, one more, and eight. Go ahead and take your right knee, lift it up, place it back in front of the shoulder block, Sit back to your heels. Reach your arms forward on the wood, releasing into a modified child's pose position since the shoulder blocks are right in front of you. Taking a couple of deep breaths. We have feet and straps, some stretching, and warming to finish off our class today. Go ahead and walk yourself up. Replace your hand straps with your foot straps if you need to. Come to the side because the springs are light and change it out to two springs. I favor two heavy springs for footwork. Go ahead and come lying down on your back. Straighten your right leg, taking your left foot strap, placing it around your foot of the arch. Straighten your left leg, bring your right foot off the foot bar. Place it around your right foot. Straighten your right leg as well. Shimmering where you need to with shoulder blocks, arms platform down by your side. Turn your feet up to a Pilates V. Relaxed feet, not necessarily flexed, not pointed. Draw your heels in to your body. Go ahead and check on your body. Make sure that you're not popping up at your ribs or flaring your hips. Sacrum's heavy. Shoulder blades wide. Soft sternum. Press out, squeezing everything towards the midline, leaving your heels glued together, and pull it back in. And press. Pull. Leaving your body completely still, your neutral spine intact. Your legs are moving independently for the rest of your body. Your body. 
body is completely stable. There's seven. Bend your knees in halfway, so you're in a diamond position. Bring your legs up to the ceiling. We're going to squeeze to lower our legs in the diamond position, leaving our neutral spine intact, and lift them back up to the ceiling. Squeeze your glutes and hamstrings to lower, and lift with control back up to the ceiling. Exhale to lower, and inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Squeezing your heels together the entire time, not letting your heels slide against each other. Equal work in both feet. And lift. Shake out your neck to release any tension from other exercises. When you lift your legs, don't lift them so high that you imprint or flatten your curve in your lower back. There's nine. Lift, straighten your legs. We're going to open them with pointed feet and flex to close them. Wherever you can, maintaining a neutral spine and straighten your legs as much as you can. There's three. Flex to close. Point to open. Flex to close. Make sure that you're not, you didn't lose your neutral spine. Feel your hips. Moving freely in the sockets. Try and make your heels meet together in the middle at the same time. And one more. Bring your legs down to working level in a Pilates turn up position. Bend your knees to a diamond shape so you can feel your glutes engage and your inner thighs engage as well. Might be up a little higher, maybe down a little lower. You'll know it when you find it. Go ahead and close the book and open it back up. And close it, bringing your knees and bringing your legs together in parallel in a hook position. And open the book, hinging at your heels, rotating your femur in the hip socket to a diamond shape. Close the book and open it, leaving your body completely stable, not losing your neutral spine, wide collarbone. Open sacrum, the tiny movement, you'll feel it in your hip flexor, in your uh, hip area, your hip rotator area, not your hip flexors, I'm sorry. Here's nine and ten. Bring your knees into frog, press out once, bring them back in, bring your legs straight, as straight as you can without losing your um, neutral spine, we're going to do leg circles five in each direction. Open to the side, squeezing your legs together, and exhale to bring them up. Inhale, squeeze, and exhale. Inhale. Again, allow your hips to move freely in the socket. Here's four. And here's five. We're going to reverse. Pull down using your glutes and hamstrings. Open to the side and bring your legs back together. And lower, squeezing glutes and hamstrings. Continue to work your turnout muscles or your hip muscle, rotation muscles, as you bring your feet around. We're working on Pilates V. Continue to rotate the entire time. Don't lose the rotation. Pull your legs down and open. Bring back up. And pull your legs down and open, bringing them back up. Bring your feet down to working level. Bring your right knee into your chest. Take the foot strap off. Carefully find the foot bar with your right foot. Peg the right strap. Bring your left foot up to the ceiling. Begin to bend your right knee to stretch. Your right hamstring. If you're able to come all the way to the bumper and you need some more, feel free to go ahead and reach up and grab the strap and pull it towards your underarm. But if you're not there, 
Go ahead and make sure that you're staying in neutral spine. If you're pulling on your strap, please stay in neutral spine as well. Relaxing your ribs in the mat. I'm going to press out with my right leg, straightening it. I'm going to reach across with my right hand, grab the strap, pull the strap across my body, lifting my left hip slightly for a hip flexor stretch. And then I'm going to begin to bend my right knee a little bit to draw my leg up slightly. Make sure that you're controlling this movement so that you do not tweak out your back. This should be very slow and controlled. Just trying to get a little extra oomph behind our IT band stretch here. Straighten your, your right leg. Bring the strap over to the left side. Hold on to it to keep it out of your face. Turn out both feet. Begin to bend your right knee. When the strap begins to straighten and there's resistance, go ahead and release it. Try to keep your hips square and let the carriage and the springs pull your foot up towards your ear at an angle. In a V-shaped position. Try not to lose your neutral spine. Try to pull that left hip down. You'll feel a little bit deeper in your hamstring. Straighten your legs. Take your left foot out. Place your left foot on the foot bar. Take your right foot strap. Bend your right knee into your body. Place the foot strap around the arch of your foot. Begin to bend your knee. Let go of the strap. Let the strap pull your leg under your right underarm. Try to keep a neutral spine here. Don't imprint your low back. Again, if you can make it all the way to the carriage, you like to feel extra. Maintain your neutral spine. Go ahead and pull the strap a little bit closer to your underarm. Go ahead and straighten your left leg. Take the left hand, bring the strap across your body. Begin to bend that left leg, lifting your right hip slightly. Controlling the strap. Don't yank it too hard on my or the other. You just want to give it a little bit of support. Go ahead and straighten your right left leg. I'm sorry. Take the strap in your right hand, bringing your right, right leg out to the side. Turn both feet up, even one on the foot bar. Keeping your hips square. Go ahead and bend your left knee. You need some tension in the strap. Go ahead and release it. Bringing your foot up and out to the right side of the booty. Go ahead and try to square your hips a little bit more. Go a little bit deeper. Get the belly of the hamstring for the stretch. Go ahead and straighten your left leg. Bend your right knee to your chest. Take your foot out of the foot strap. Peg your strap. Bring your right foot down to the foot bar. Bend your knees to bring the carriage in. Go ahead and come up to the side. I'm going to drop my springs for one heavy spring. We're going to go into swan. For those of you who have any problems, please come to a crisscross applesauce position up against the shoulder blocks for this. For those of you who do not have a, um, a uh, I'm sorry, pardon me, knee issue, uh, you can come into the fourth position. I'm facing to the left side of my corner if I'm facing the football. This is the left side. I have my right shin perpendicular to the outside of my corner and my left shin is pressing up against the shoulder blocks. I'm going into a mermaid. My right hand is slightly in front of me on the foot bar. My fingers are relaxed. My elbow is pointing down towards my hip. I'm going to draw my shoulders down my back. I'm going to straighten my arm by using my lats, pressing over across the foot bar. I'm going to come back up by bending my arm, squeezing my obliques to sit up, and bending over to the other side, pulling myself over into the well with my shoulder block and my foot. Get back up, place my hand back down, straighten my arm, reach over my foot bar. I'm going to bend my elbow, squeeze my obliques, come up to sitting, and bend over into the well. One more, we're going to add a back extension 
For this last one, I place my hand back down in my periphery. I'm going to straighten my elbow. Bend over, press the foot bar. Rotate to look in at the springs. Place my left hand on the outside of the foot bar. Move my right hand to the outside of the other side. I'm with straight arms. I'm going to come up into a back extension or swan position and press back out. Keep your arms as straight as you can. You might find that you need to bend your back arm slightly to accommodate for your body. Bring your shoulders down your back. Press out for this last one. Think of your right hand. Place it back so it's in your periphery when you rotate. Hover your left arm off the foot bar, looking at the springs. Rotate back out to the side. Bend your right elbow, bringing it into your hip. Squeeze your obliques to come up to sitting. Bend over into the well one more time. And come back up. We're going to get off of our carriage carefully. Walk around to the other side. Sit on the other side of my carriage, facing the right side. I'm going to take my right shin and put it into the shoulder block. And take my left leg and place it perpendicular with the side of my reformer. If I am a person who has any issues and this is uncomfortable, I want to say crisscross applesauce. Bring the other leg to the front of your body than you had on this side. So if your right leg was in front, please put your left leg in front on this side. If your left leg was in front on this side, please put your right leg in front on the other side. I'm going to have one hand draped right across my shoulder block, my left hand on the foot bar, my elbow pointing towards my hip, my fingers relaxed, my shoulders down my back. I'm going to straighten my left elbow, driving my shoulders down my back, reaching over across the foot bar with my right hand. I'm going to come up by bending my left elbow into my hip, squeezing my obliques on the right side. I'm going to reach over and grab my post or my shoulder block to pull myself in for an opposite stretch into the well. And come back up to sitting, place my hand back down, elbow into my hip, straighten my arm, and bend across my foot bar. I'm going to bend at my elbow, driving my shoulder down my back. Come up to sitting, and reach over into the well. For this last one, we're going to do the back extension. Come back up to sitting, place my hand down in my periphery, straighten my elbow, reach across the foot bar. I'm going to twist to look down on my springs, place my right hand on the outside of the foot bar, Bring my left hand to the outside of the other foot bar. I'm going to draw my shoulders down my back. Come up into a swan back extension position. Bring my shoulders down. Press out. And press out. Make sure my ribs aren't flaring. Press out. One more. And press out. I'm going to lift my left hand. Bring it back to the position it was originally in, which would be in my periphery, when I'm facing the side of my reformer. I'm going to hover my right hand off, looking into the spring. I'm going to rotate back to the side of my reformer. I'm going to bend my elbow into my hip, driving my shoulder blade down my back. Sit up, reach across, grab my poster shoulder block, bend into the well for one final stretch. I'm going to come up, I'm going to carefully get off my reformer. And thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you have a great day.